Sunday School Lesson for July the 19th, 2015, Lesson 7. We're still studying from Unit 2. Michael called for justice among unjust people. We have a subject for Sunday's lesson says, What God Wants. What God Wants. As we study this lesson and get the correct interpretation from the book of Michael, uh, the prophet of God, uh, there are many applications that we can make uh, to the Christian's life today. But first of all, we must get the proper interpretation. Um, the lesson background is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, uh, or devotional reading. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, verses 12 through 22. But I encourage you, okay, for knowledge purpose of the uh, lesson from the book of Michael, okay, I want you to also read uh, the book of Deuteronomy, the 6th chapter, verses uh, 20 through 25. We'll explain later on why. We also want you to read Isaiah, the 5th chapter. And we also will explain to you uh, later on as to why. The word Michael, the prophet, uh, it means uh, uh, who is like the Lord. Michael means who is like the Lord, Jehovah. The print of the background scripture says uh, the entire sixth chapter of Michael. And the print comes from Michael the sixth chapter, verses uh, six through eight. As we look at this uh, this man, Michael, who is like the Lord. And as we study his life and realize that he prophesied uh, mostly to the uh, Judah in Jerusalem, but he had some indictment against Israel of north. His ministry ran from approximately 750 uh, B.C. to 710 B.C. Michael was a contemporary of Isaiah. Isaiah uh, prophesied also to the uh, to Judah and to Israel, but he, uh, his prophecy ran from 760 uh, uh, B.C. to 700 B.C. So therefore, uh, there is no scripture, even though they both were prophesying in the city of Jerusalem, but there is no uh, scripture that indicated that they knew each other. Okay, But the Spirit of God gave them, uh, both men, uh, some prophecy for Israel and for Judah as to how they had treated the Lord and what he had done for them, and now he was going to bring judgment on them. As you study uh, the book of Isaiah and uh, the book of Michael, we noted that Isaiah had uh, have 66 chapter, and Michael only have uh, seven. Uh, uh, but we see that as you study these books, we find that uh, there are over uh, uh, 14 scriptures that uh, uh, Michael and Isaiah were saying the same thing to the people in Jerusalem, over 14. And as you study the book of Isaiah, it is interesting that when you compare uh, many of the things that Isaiah write, wrote about, and Michael wrote about the same thing. Now, we know that uh, Michael is considered a minor prophet, while Isaiah is considered one of the majors. Now, that man's doing, okay? But all of God's word is major, okay? Michael, uh, like we say, is, is uh, much shorter, but yet and still, uh, uh, there is no uh, minor prophet with God. Uh, when we look at the from the adult quarterly, 
And we look at the aim for studying this lesson. And it says that I learned how to honor God gracefully and uh, exhibit, exhibiting the character, character trait that God requires. The character traits that God requires. Now, this was not only for uh, what God requires that the uh, nation Israel and Judah to live, how they ought to live. But we know that there are character traits that uh, we should exhibit in our life. We shouldn't have to go around and tell people that we are Christian, we are children of God. Okay? And uh, there's nothing wrong with wearing a bumper sticker, a uh, button on your lapel to say who you are. But don't let that be the only tale telling sign that people know that you are a child of God. They are character traits that uh, they should see Christ in your life. Number two, express feeling okay, about living up to God's expectation for them to be just, loving, and, expre- and uh, humble. Express feelings about living up to God's expectation. Okay? To be just, uh, 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 righteous, treating other people right, Loving, uh, love is the uh, glue to hold all, all thing together. And we find that uh, one thing when you study the book of Deuteronomy and how the children of Israel was to treat one another, okay, they were to treat each other with love. And the way they treat each other was supposed to have an influence on the heathen around them to make them want to be a part of the Jews' God. And in the New Testament, the way we treat one another should, Make some of these unsaved people, person, to want to be a Christian. But it's unfortunately that uh, they cannot see the characteristic uh, trait of the way we we, we we still have prejudice, okay? Uh, but they, but uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ transcends all demarcation lines. So all of us that have been born into the family of God, no matter what uh, nationality, your color, where you live, where your circumstance of life, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. But it's unfortunately, okay, the world cannot see this in us. And then number three, lead the community uh, into making God's requirements a reality. Lead the community. Now, this community... I think we're still dealing with the community of faith, which is every born-again believer that make up this community of faith. Because we're going to see in this lesson that you cannot expect an unsaved person okay, to live like saved people. they got to be born again. And once you have been born into the family of God, okay, then God has requirements. Okay, okay, and we should make those requirements a reality. Okay, more about that later. Okay, now... Uh, as we said, that uh, uh, this is our uh, third lesson from the book of Michael. I think we have one more. And as we study the book, these are uh, prophecy. And uh, God uh, uh, first tells the prophet, okay, the Bible said that he, he uh, sent them early. When they reached the land and they started going away from God, God sent a uh, prophet early. When they first started to going away from God. And, 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 and warn them. And when you study the Palestinian covenant in the book of Deuteronomy, the uh, 29th and, th- and the 30th chapter of Deuteronomy, the Palestinian covenant, God had Moses tell the people, I'm going to give you the land, okay? And, uh, but uh, for you to stay in the land, okay, he gave them some requirements that uh, they had to observe. Now, we are dealing with a generation that is... Uh, 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 several hundred years later, after they had been in the land. And we're going to see that the uh, moral standard of these people got worse and worse. Okay, they had some bad kings, and they had some good kings, but uh, uh, as the generation one uh, passed off the scene, then we find that uh, many of them began to get worse and worse. Okay, and think about the uh, situation in our country today. Okay. Not just among unsaved, but just think about us as Christians. We're going to see that we think, some of us think, that as long as I go to church on Sunday and uh, pay my tithes and offering, 
then God got to accept my coming. Well, God is not going to accept your coming if you are not living up to God's standards, okay? When you look around and see what's going on in our church today, look at the shacking up. Look at the uh, adultery, okay? Look at some of the some of the people in the church, even in the pulpit, okay, is uh, 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 have the key position in the choir, okay, on the deacon board, usher board, okay, have uh, a key position in the church, and uh, 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 they are not living up to God's standard. And God, uh, they are not representing. We are the Lord's ambassador, friend. And uh, we are not living up to the standard that God requires for us to live by. Now, when we started the book of uh, Amos, okay, and uh, we find that uh, 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 there are uh, three great uh, prophetic discourses in this book. And uh, they all begin, all those three all begin with, uh, hear ye the people, hear, ye, hear all ye people. Look at chapter 1, verses uh, 2. And then the second discourse is uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Hear, I pray you. And then the third discourse is in chapter 6, in our lesson for today, uh, verse 1. Hear ye now what the Lord said, Jehovah. Self-existent, all-powerful one said, okay? And uh, 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 this is very important. Hear what the Lord said. Too many times we tell you what we think, and we leave off what the word of what God says, okay? Uh, when you say what th- thus said the Lord, then you are saying that it's not, these are not my words. This is what the Lord had commissioned me. To tell you, and sometimes when we, we tell them what the word of God says, uh, my friends, uh, you're gonna create a lot of hardships. I mean, not not uh, you're gonna create some dislike. But we got to learn how to stand and preach and teach the adulterated, unadulterated word of God. Now, uh, Deuteronomy, I of Israel here in the book of Deuteronomy, the uh, uh, is a generation that had died and uh, in, a, in in the wilderness, and the younger generation gonna go over and take the land. Okay, and Moses, God wanted them to know what God had done for them, okay, what God required of them, okay, their full parent. Like we say, uh, uh, we're dealing with this generation now, uh, several hundred years after, okay, uh, the book of Deuteronomy was written. But in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, okay, on the 20 through 25, uh, God had Moses tell the people that you were slave servant in Egypt, and I brought you out. Okay, uh, uh, from slavery, that I may bring you in, okay, to the land of freedom. Okay, now Israel was not always a slave, okay. The book of Deuteronomy says uh, there were seven souls went down there, and they had uh, uh, a great liberty at first, but they became slaves, okay. Read about how they became slaves in the book of the uh, first part of Exodus. Okay, and uh, uh, the Egyptian and the new Pharaoh made slaves of them. And God brought them out of slavery, a land of slavery, and into a land of freedom, liberty. And the application is that mankind, in this day of grace, the Christian, okay, we was not always in slavery to sin and Satan, but we became a slave through Adam sin, okay, and then we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but God brought us out through Jesus Christ uh, into f- liberty, okay, that we don't have to obey sin and Satan, but look at the way we live sometimes, we live as if though we got the can't help it, and we are just as bad as the children of Israel, okay, and the younger generation in the book of Michael, very important. Okay, I brought you out that I may bring you in. Okay, he brought us out of sin and Satan, slavery, that he might bring us into liberty. Now, for the first time in our lives, we can say no to sin and Satan and say yes to the Spirit of God and his word through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, quite a, quite an application. Okay, so uh, as look at this lesson, note the key verse. He has showed thee, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord Jehovah requires of thee? God wants us to, to do justly, to uh, love mercy, 
to walk humbly, humbly with our God. Okay. Now notice that uh, uh, he has showed thee. The Lord Jehovah. This is what he required. Okay. To walk humble, humble, okay, justly and mercy uh, with God. Notice how your creator. Okay. And we're going to see that even though they were sinning and they went away from God. God still called them his people and he still loved them. God loved us, friend. Even when we uh, show no gratitude to what he has done for us, what he is doing and what he shall do for us in the future. God still loves us. And this is the reason why uh, uh, when you read these uh, 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 prophetic books about God's judgment upon his people, and then uh, uh, before the, the book closed, it's going to talk about how God is going to bless them in the future. Okay, the nation Israel, not these individuals, that, uh, the Jews that are living uh, then and now, but they got to accept Jesus Christ today if they want to be saved. But there's going to come a time when the nation Israel, okay, is going to be saved. That's in the kingdom age, okay. So uh, uh, read the first uh, three verses, first two verses of our lesson, and then the print begin with the third verse, and it run through, okay, the uh, eighth verse. So the third verse says, O my people, what have I done to thee? And wherewith shall I have I wearied thee? I offended thee. Testify, speak against me. Now, here is like a courtroom scene. If you ever been uh, in a courtroom and hear the uh, 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 prosecuting attorney making uh, his case before uh, the judge and the jury, okay? And now uh, uh, Amos here is uh, uh, using a courtroom scene and he's calling upon the mountains and the hills to uh, be a witness like a jury. And uh, 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 what he had to say and the indictment that God had against his chosen people, okay? And then he goes on to talk about, and uh, 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 testify against me. What have I done that make you want to, that make you treat me this way? And as we look at these next two few verses, all of us as parents, or many of us as parents, maybe not all of us, but many of us, okay, have said this to some of our children. Some of our children uh, we sacrifice, and we do without for the benefit of our children. But then when they get a certain age, they begin to feel like that you haven't done anything for me. And they have no respect for their parents. And you ask them, okay, what have I done? Okay, tell me. Now notice that uh, uh, God here is not going to uh, talk about the things that they had done against him. Okay, but he wanted them to express themselves and tell him what he had done. This is why I want you to go back and read uh, Isaiah 5. Okay, because Isaiah, uh, 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 writing by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and he had the people to understand what God was saying, what more could I have done? Okay, what more? And then he goes on to talk about what he had did for them and how they uh, dishonored him. And how they had no uh, gratitude. And he asked them the question, what have I done to make you treat me this way? And this is the same thing that Michael is saying here in the sixth chapter. God is telling him. And then he said, I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. I redeemed thee out of the house of the uh, uh, of servant. Of, uh, uh, you were a slave. Uh, Egypt. Now, he was talking about here that how he brought the nation, okay, these four parents of this younger generation he was talking to, okay, he brought them out. They were slaves in Egypt, okay. They couldn't help themselves. This reason why we say go back and read the uh, sixth chapter. I brought you out that I may bring you in, okay, and then look where you are living. I redeemed you, and this word redeemed mean that he paid a price, Okay, uh, the story was told. You see, uh, uh, we've been redeemed. Our soul's been redeemed. The bodies have not as yet. But because the soul's been redeemed, God is one day going to redeem the body. God is not through with us yet. And this is what God wants Michael to tell the people. I'm not through with you yet. I have made you some promises. And I'm going to keep my promises. But why do you treat me the way you do? What have I done? Speak. 
testified. Okay, he paid the price. Story was told once that this boy, talking about redeem, the boy made a little sailboat, and he goes down to the uh, river, and he loved to sail his boat on the river, on with a long string, and the wind one day broke the string as he was uh, sailing his boat, and the little sailboat began to drift away that he couldn't reach it, and he went home very sad. He made that boat, but he lost it. A few weeks later, he was walking down the street, and he looked in a hobby shop, and he saw his little boat. And he knew that he made it, but he recognized it because he made it. And he go in and talk to the proprietor, and he told the proprietor it was his. He made it. And the proprietor said, well, if you want it, you got to pay the price. you got to buy it. He go, he got the price, and he go home and uh, got a little piggy bank. And it took every penny he had in his bank to buy his sailboat. boat. He goes back. And he gave the proprietor his last penny, and he gave him his sailboat, and he hugged the sailboat, and he says that you are mine once, you are mine twice, you are mine because I made you, and you are mine because I brought you back. He redeemed it, okay? God made us. We went away from him, and he had redeemed us through the blood of Jesus Christ. He made the nation Israel in, uh, uh, in the land of Egypt. Seven of souls went down. They were multiplied. He made them a nation. And he blessed them. And he said that uh, you were slave. And I sent Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Moses, okay, was the uh, a prophet and also the leader. Okay. Aaron was Moses' brother. He was the first high priest. Miriam also was a prophet and a part of this uh, uh, three-person leader. And she was a singer. Okay, as well as a prophet, and uh, uh, worshiping God through song. And then he says, uh, uh, I did all of this for you, not because you deserve it, but because I made you, and I love you. I created you, made you a nation for a purpose. And now you have failed to live up to the standards that uh, uh, I want you to live up to. Then look at that fifth verse. All my people. Now, notice what he called them, my people. He's not going to enumerate the things that they have been doing wrong. But he wants them to remember. Okay. Now, try to picture in your mind, the uh, uh, when you read the uh, book of Numbers, the 22nd through about the 24th chapter. Okay. And this is where you're going to find out, okay, what he is talking about here in the 5th chapter. Now they had, uh, def- uh, God had given them, okay, uh, 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 the territory here on the east bank of the Jordan River in Shittim, okay, which was uh, the land of the Moabites, okay, and uh, the uh, uh, king, uh, Oren, okay. It was no way that they could defeat, but God gave them the victory. The Moabites wanted, he, they was uh, the sons of, uh, uh, a lot. They was kinfolk. But they wanted to destroy the nation Israel. But God would not allow that to happen. Okay? So God gave them that territory on the East Bank. And when you study this, you find out in the book of Deuteronomy, you find out that uh, that territory here on the East Bank of the Jordan River, okay, uh, two and a half nation, uh, uh, tribe were going to be given that territory. The Moabites, the king wanted that the Jews to be cursed, okay, and uh, through a person that used a uh, 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 divination, but God will not allow that to be done. I want you to read this for yourself. So here, uh, he is calling attention to what God had done for them, and then he says, uh, 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 "From Shittim unto Gilgal, Shittim, like we said, on the east bank of the Jordan River, okay." And uh, on the uh, west bank was the uh, after you're going to cross the Jordan River, it was going to be the first place was going to be Gilgal. Now, when you study all of this and you see how God miraculously, okay, uh, defeated those uh, kings, gave them their territory, He brought them across the Jordan River, okay. The Jordan we talk a lot about the Red Sea, but the Jordan River experience was quite a lesson in itself. 
the high priest, the priest, when they stepped in the water, the water uh, stopped coming down from north. And they walked immediately. See, in the, Jordan, in the uh, Red Sea, the, the, the wind had to blow all night to dry up the riverbank. But here, the riverbank became dry immediately. They went across. Okay? And the first place they got to was Gilgal. God protected them. That you may know the righteousness of the Lord. He did all of this. So you might know the righteous acts, the justice, okay, of the Lord. Notice all capital level, Jehovah. He wanted you to know this. God didn't want them to forget it. God wanted them to not forget what he had done for their four parents. Okay. God don't want you and me to forget what he have done for us. Okay. And uh, as I think about, okay, we as a black race of people, okay, how God had brought us out, not utopia, but my friends, uh, it's no way that we could have been brought out of the slavery that we was in without God working through uh, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King and other civil rights leaders, okay? And look at the way we act sometime now, as if though we do not know, okay? And some of us do not know the history of what God has brought us out from to where we are. And then some of us as Christians, we don't uh, study the Word of God to realize how God has brought us out of sin and Satan to where we are today now. And then it says there, uh, he asked them from our adult quarter, a, rhetor- a rhetorical qu- uh, act, uh, his chosen people. Two piercing question: My people, what have I done to you? Have I burdened? Have I uh, been unjust to you? Speak out. This is, my, my friend, think about God is telling Amos here. To tell the people. To tell me what I have done. That you consider so wrong. These were God's chosen people. God chose them. God made them a nation. The sixth verse. Where was This is their uh, comment. Okay. We find here that uh, in this verse, if you look at it from the NIV, it says, uh, Well, what shall I come before the Lord? Now, this is what they were saying. This, God knows their heart. Okay. Now, notice that they are not. God had told uh, uh, Amos to tell them to speak out to him. But now, they are t- speaking to Amos. Notice this closely. With what shall I come before the Lord Jehovah and bow down before uh, the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offering and with calves of old? They was keeping the old sacrifice. Okay. They was going to the temple. They were offering the sacrifices. They was keeping those feast days. But we're going to see that their hearts were not right. Okay. My friends... Uh, uh, when we come to worship God, we must come with the uh, heart right. Come with your sins, confess. Don't think that you can live any way you think you're big enough to. And then God got to accept your coming on a Sunday morning. That's religion, okay? Christianity is not religion. Christianity is a life. Religion is something you do regular, okay? It's Sunday. It's time for me to go to church, okay? But Monday... Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay, I do whatever I think I'm big enough to, but yet and still, I go to church on a Sunday. Okay? Uh, what do God want? Shall I come before Him with burnt offering and uh, calf a year old? They were doing that. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression? The fruit of my body for the uh, sin of my soul. Sacrifice in children was not what God will accept. And that was uh, abomination in the sight of God. 
But they have the audacity to say, we have done all of this. And we're, what else do he want? Do he want us to bring our children and sacrifice them? Okay. Over the period of time, look at the amount of uh, 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 animals that have been uh, uh, for, brought for burnt offering. Look at the calf of a year old. This is a part of the book of uh, Leviticus. They were told to do this. Okay. The Lord be pleased with 10,000 rams. 10,000 rivers of oil shall I offer. That's a sad commentary. If you look at the lad, the eighth verse of our lesson, then Amos speak again. He has showed thee, O man, what is good and what doth the Lord requires of thee. But to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with thy God. Where did he show this to him? In the book of Deuteronomy. In the book of the law. God has showed them from his word. God has showed us today. From his word, those of us who are children of God. What does he require? God requires us. To live a life that is pleasing unto him. God requires us to study his word. God requires us to uh, uh, be led by the spirit of God. God requires us to let, uh, since we are his ambassadors. We have a responsibility to study the word of God. And learn all we can about the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we tell someone about the saving power of Jesus Christ, we're telling them about what we have learned from his word. He has showed thee, O man, what is good. What does Jehovah require of thee? What did he require? If you keep on reading this, uh, eighth cha- this uh, sixth chapter, and reading how they were mistreating the poor, false balance, okay, deceitfulness, he wants you to do justly. To do the thing that is proper and right, favorable. Do what is right. Follow the divine law. And then he says, uh, to love mercy. Un- uh, uh, love and kindness. Mercy, love is what holds us together. Love. How can you say you love your fe- uh, God and hate your fellow man? God wants us to love one another. To walk humbly in humility, lowness. Stop exalting self. Let no man think of himself more highly than he ought to think. We and some of us in the church today, we think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. As we go back and look at, okay, what God have required and what God have done, and the respect that they were showing to God for what He have done to the nation, what He had promised doing to the, to these uh, generation now, and what He shall do in the future. And God never makes mistakes. Okay. I heard a pastor preaching a series of sermons. And that pastor was saying that if God uh, does something to, for, to you that you know that he didn't have, that, uh, he, that you didn't like, uh, he do something to you that you knew that he, uh, 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 you didn't appreciate what he had done, you had a right to get mad with God. Think about that. Now, he, this person was in the pulpit preaching. How can you get mad with God? And this is the same thing that God was saying to the nation, uh, Mo, uh, God was saying to uh, Michael, okay, to the nation of Israel. You think I've been wrong? Speak out. Express yourself. God knows what is best for his children. 
And God is not going to give us everything that we ask. No father is going to give his children everything he asks for. He knows what's best. But just because he said no, then you're going to walk around mad with God? How long do you stay mad? Hmm? What do you want God to do when you're walking around poked, with your mouth poked out? Mad at him. And this person said that it's healthy. Okay. Don't keep this bottle up on the inside. you get sick. So get mad. A leader. All the promises of God. In him the ye, and in him the amen. To the glory of God the Father. Everything that God had promised the nation Israel. That have not already given them. He going to give it to the nation. Not necessarily those Jews that are living uh, during Amos time or the Jews that are living now. If a Jew is to be saved in the day of grace, he got to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and be a common part of the church. But when the church age is over, those Jews are going to be saved during the tribulation period. Okay? They're going to make up the whole nation Israel. From all tribes, God knows where they are. Now, this is, this is part of the next Sunday's lesson. God is not through with them. They've just set aside. But God is going to keep his promise. God is going to keep his promise to the church. God sometimes has to chastise us. But he does it because he loves us. He doesn't do chastise us, okay, for punitive sakes. But God chastises us for correction. Read the 12th chapter of Hebrews. Okay, God doesn't enjoy. God is chastising his children today. God was not going to enjoy chastising the children of Israel by take, allowing the uh, Assyrian to take Israel into captivity in 722. But Judah and Jerusalem didn't learn from the lesson of Israel. In 586, uh, God allowed uh, Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon to take them into captivity. Okay? For 70 years. But yet and still, he loved them. God loved you and me. But God sometimes has to chastise us, friend. But God have a glorious future for all of us that have accepted him as our Savior. Now, we don't want you to use, okay, uh, this eighth verse as a mean for salvation. Okay? What does the Lord require? A unsaved person cannot live this way. Okay? You have to be born again. This verse is not written to unsaved people. This verse was not written to the heathen nation around Israel. It was written to God's chosen people. And in this day of grace, once we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, born into the family of God, then God expects us to live a certain way. Okay? But this is not to unsaved people. You got to have the Spirit of God in you to live this way. What does the Lord require? He requires us to live a life that is pleasing to him and according to his word. May God bless you. May he keep you. And we hope to see you in Sunday school Sunday morning.